Hello, Pancasters. Today we talk about SAML. We'll start with an introduction and then look at how it is used with Palo Alto Networks products. First of all, what does it stand for? Well, it stands for Security Assertion Markup Language. Basically, SAML is an open standard authentication protocol. With SAML, we have a number of systems involved. Firstly, we have the user. That's me, as I want to access some applications. We also have a service provider and an identity provider. So let's say I want to access Zoom. This will be the service provider, but I'm not set up as a user on Zoom. This is where the identity provider comes in. Let's say my company uses Azure AD, which is a cloud-based Active Directory service, and that's where I am listed as a user. Zoom and Azure AD are configured to know about each other. So when I try to log into Zoom, I get redirected to authenticate to Azure AD. Once I have successfully done this, Azure AD sends back a response called an assertion, which is forwarded to the service provider. Assuming I have authenticated successfully, this allows me access to Zoom. Now, one thing to note is that the service provider, Zoom, and the identity provider, Azure AD, do know about each other and have to be configured, but they never communicate directly with each other. It is all done via the user. So why is SAML becoming so common? Well, obviously, it is widely accepted as an authentication protocol for cloud applications. And more and more, we see organizations moving their directory services to the cloud as well. It also allows users to access multiple applications using the same authentication service and therefore the same credentials. This also provides additional security as your details are not stored on every service provider you access, just with the identity provider. It makes sense that we are seeing it used more and more. Before we move on to SAML uses with Palo Alto Networks, I want to discuss a couple of other terms often used with SAML. Let's start with SSO. SSO stands for single sign-on and gets back to the fact you can use the same credentials with multiple applications, but even better. Once you authenticate to your identity provider, tokens are used. So even though you try and access a different application, but one which is also using SAML with the same identity provider, you won't be asked for your credentials again. The token will be used to authenticate you. SLO is somewhat related and stands for single logout. This needs to be configured on the service provider. And what it means is that if I am authenticated to the identity provider, I can now access all of the applications, assuming SSO is configured and working. If I log out of application X and SLO is not configured, the SAML tokens will still let me authenticate to other applications without providing my credentials again. If SLO is configured, when I log out of application X, I get logged out from the identity provider. Next time I try to access an application, I need to provide my credentials again. Okay, so that's SAML. Next, let's look at how we use it with Palo Alto Networks. As an authentication protocol, there are a number of places we can use SAML. The obvious first one is in accessing the management of our products. So when you log into a firewall or panorama, you can use SAML as an authentication method. Probably the most common one used now is for Global Protect. Global Protect Client is used to set up a VPN to either an on-prem gateway or to Prisma Access. The Global Protect Client needs to authenticate to the portal and or gateway, and we see SAML being widely used these days, especially for Prisma Access. It again gets back to a shift to using cloud provider authentication and directory services. The final use is for Captive Portal. Firstly, a quick recap. We can use Captive Portal on Palo Alto Networks firewalls to request a user to authenticate before being able to access services through the firewall. There are different use cases for this. Let's say you are using user ID to only allow certain users to access the internet. If any traffic reaches a firewall that is from an IP that does not have a user associated, Captive Portal can be triggered to ask the user to authenticate. As this happens on the firewall, we now know the user to IP mapping. 
Another common use case is not just for internet access, but say accessing sensitive internal applications through the firewall. Captive Portal can be used in this case as well to request the user to authenticate and also provide multi-factor authentication for additional security. Okay, so that sums up the introduction to SAML and how it can be used with Palo Alto Networks products. One last thing regarding configuration. As we now know, the service provider and the identity provider need to know about and trust each other, so this needs configuration. SAML configuration is made even easier because generally both service providers and identity providers can export the SAML metadata. This is simply the config required by the other side, which can then be imported rather than manually having to configure the various options. I normally like to throw in some troubleshooting tips, but to be honest, SAML should normally just work. And if it doesn't, it can require some specific captures to see why it's not working. Probably the main thing to remember is the use of tokens. So a user may not always have to provide credentials when authenticating. This is not so much for troubleshooting, but just understanding it is there. When it comes to using SAML for Global Protect, it is even more important to know, because with Global Protect, we also use cookies for authentication. This means both Global Protect and SAML can use their own tokens or cookies to authenticate a user without prompting for credentials. So there we have it, a brief intro to SAML and its uses with Palo Alto Networks. We are seeing this used more and more, and luckily issues are pretty uncommon, other than a few config tweaks, or understanding the protocol, which hopefully this has helped with. Remember to head to live.paloaltonetworks.com for the transcript and related articles.